G'day everyone, welcome back to this week's turning project and at the moment I picked this large beautiful piece of mango from my storage little containers that I have stashed around the property hiding them from the uh, ball and chain, the Minister for Finance and Defence, Nadine. But this beautiful piece of mango was cut on the 8th of the 6th 2022 and we will check the moisture because this piece here is four inches thick so 100 mil for those people that speak in real terminology in millimeters that ruler anyway we are at 11.5 percent air dried el natural and we are going to see what we can do with it it's looking a little bit second hand i believe that might be the piss there the back is very ordinary we've got some bug holes but uh beautiful queensland mango beautiful one day better than next here in queensland but we'll mount it up let's get this show on the road it's got some pretty hectic teeth marks there from the chainsaw must have been a little bit rough that day i'm thinking a dish like a like a dish race dish like i filmed last week we'll give it a go i need a bit of a break from making all the small little bowls so i thought this would be perfect i'm just going to eyeball that in base plate and that is going to be very annoying for you so let's swap that out <laughs> that would have been hectic base plate because <laughs> oh keza that would have been hectic if someone had their headphones on then, oh, I'm sorry. We'll just lock all this down. And I'm choosing the face plate because it's the most sturdiest method of mounting timbers up on your spindle. Dad, thank you. Miss ya. Let's get this up here. Feed it on with the hand wheel. That little spin at the end there, I'm just doing that just to make sure it's nicely locked off, lathe speed turned down. Let's put the tail stock on, because it, it looks it looks very second hand. I'm, I'm a bit dubious, is dubious the right word? Someone in the audience will know, you know, may rest in peace. John Jordan, when I watched a symposium one time, he was doing a demonstration and I believe he, he was talking about a measurement and I, I always, always remember it. And he, he couldn't remember the conversion or something like that. Someone in the audience told him the answer. Just how he said it, so genuine and meaningful. He said, you know, there's someone always out there that knows, that knows the answer and we appreciate you. It just had a really profound effect on me. And I always remember it to this day. And even Nadine, the ball and chain, she even remembers it when I say it, you know. What a top bloke. I just hope I'll have an influence like that on someone someday. He's just such a cool dude. Let's get going. Righto, so first tool off the uh, shelf here is the 19 millimeter woodcut bowl gouge, sharpened to 55 degrees. First movement I'm gonna do, I'm gonna push in. So I'm gonna just push into the face and I'm gonna clean it right up Get a blank canvas so we know what we're looking at. It's gonna take this edge down just here because this bit here is about two millimeters away from the bottom of the lathe bed. Can you hear that? So that's what that is. I'm gonna get rid of that <laughs> right now before we have an accident. And you see how I'm not fighting that? I'm just letting the gouge kiss the timber and taking little bits. I'm not, I'm not fighting it at all. And that white stuff that you see there is paint. So I must have ran out of wood glue, PVA wood glue for drying it, and I've used paint. But look how ordinary this is. Look at that. Goodness me. We've got to keep working that, that side down there. So we get it nice and flat. And I'm keeping an eye up the top there as well, because I don't want to go make a big whoop de doo in it. I think we're nearly getting there. Just there.
Beautiful. Lovely. Now I'm going to come back that way and clean up all this crap here. Oh, flat spot. Let's keep going. My apologies. Heads up. Woo! Slow it down there, son. Now I'm going to push in and ride that bevel. Getting uneven through there. Right, so that got rid of that flat spot. All right, I'm just gonna push back this way now. Trim it, trim it lightly, just so I can get a gauge of the measurement that I need when I'm marking out. Lovely. Right, -o, now I'm gonna come across the face here. I'm gonna get rid of this tail stop. And then we're gonna trim the face of this platter slash dish slash bowl. Who knows, we'll just play it by year so as we go. I don't know what you're doing all the way over there, but you need to be over here, so. Anyway, pressing in. A bit more to go there, but that's not looking too bad. I thought that would be looking quite crapful. That's looking quite nice. So I'm looking over here for anything that could potentially come hurling off, but I see this pith here. See that pith bit there? I reckon we could turn that out and make like a dish out of this. We could turn that, we could turn that section out. I reckon that'll be our best bet yes the reason why you're probably thinking i'm doing this all the time and i don't i don't do that all the time is because if i found if i just do that i ride the undulations of the of the piece so now i will do it because i've taken that i've taken out all the bulk off it needs to calm down i don't know what's going on a bit more Right up. Let's see what we're looking at here. Right up. Okay. Dish it is. It's gonna be a dish. Put that back. I added another magnet too. If anyone was, oh, it's come off. Oh, it's, <laughs> it's on the ruler. <laughs> oh. Cheers. I thought I was being all smart and showing you. I added another little magnet. <laughs> oh, I did not know that. Yeah, anyway. Righto, let's mark this up. Let's go like a nice flowing dish down. Someone can bring it to the table. Like an oversized dish that I made last week. The other side's quite cracked up too. Very cracked up. So we're gonna lose that material anyway. So I'm not, not too concerned about that. The higher the measurement up here I go, the steeper the dish will be and the deeper it will be. So if I go lower down, the, the thinner it will be. So if I make a mark here, right, I've got to take that down to that pretty much and I can only go to there. So if I go from the top and make a mark, so if I make say 15 mil, there's a fair bit of funkiness on the other side. So we'll make a mark there and that's 15 millimeters down. And if I go this side, and then measure it up. So we got 400 mil. Half a 400 mil, because it's going to be a dish. It needs a wide foot, right? So, where's Dan? There he is, mate. Brother. Fine centre, just there. Now, 400 mil will go 200, will be half of that. So then we go 100 mil, right? 50% of the overall diameter, because we want a nice stable, nice stable base for gravy slippage. If you don't know what gravy slippage is, you haven't been around long enough and you'll have to go watch another video to be part of the crew. 19 mil, 19 mil. I'd use 19 mil bowl gouges to remove the bulk. That gets rid of all the bulk material, right? So I'm gonna shave all this down. It's looking like it's quite a sawn. It's a bit of a funky actually, bit of material, but we need to get rid of that pith. We need to get rid of that. That needs to go, so. You can't have that because it'll keep cracking no matter what we do. Settle down. One way of knowing what speed you need to run it at is crank your lathe up 
until you start getting a lot of vibration right, right there, right? And then back it off. Put your hand on the bed, and that's if you've got a nice flat surface where you're working as well. If you've got a nice area where you're, where you're operating, you'll be able to notice the difference, if that makes sense. If you've got a flat surface, you turn the speed of the lathe up, back it off until it stops vibrating, that's the speed. If you're comfortable with that, that's what I do anyway. But you'll see, once I remove a bit of this weight, I'll be able to pick the speed up. Turning the shavings into the doorway. So the doorway over there. Another thing, if you haven't watched other videos, you need to go back and watch them. Let's see where that piff's lying. It's there, it's still there, but that's what we need to get rid of. A bit of, bit of bark, inclusion or something there. Just gonna keep removing that material. And can you see the way I'm going straight? Well, I'm trying to go straight, but include you as well. So, that way I don't take too much off. Right, now I'm gonna do a pull cut. I'm gonna skip that bit there. Marry it up. Our line is just here. So we're not far off it. Go another one. You can see all that sort of funkiness that I was talking about, all that there. We need to get rid of that. That's all just, just sap, and bark and crap. But the pith, the pith is gone. But we will put a little Roman OG in there in a sec. I just want to get rid of a bit more weight so when, uh, when it comes to setting this foot out, not running a mess. Just pulling that out, just literally pulling it out. See how that looks? It's gonna be rough, it's gonna pull all that fibers up, but I'll show you how to get rid of that torn grain in just a sec. That's looking good in there though, nice deep down. We need to scallop this out now. That bit there needs to come out obviously because it's just a big funky bit of material, but we're just gonna go halfway, mark it there. And then that will be our little Roman OG. 16 mil bowl gouge, heel removed. Cleaned it up quite nicely. We've still got these funky armada little bits of uh, crap in there, but we might just douse that in a bit of super glue, a bit of the old CA glue. 45 degree bevel, bevel the GL5. We're gonna do a little nice little trim cut just to finish that off, even though it probably doesn't need it, but let's do it for completeness, because that's what we do. Starting it in. So I'm coming in. And then I'll come out. Coming out, meet back there. Come back in. Go Bit of vibration through the arse end of that, but that's all right. Another way of doing it, of getting a nice clean surface, is, and I learnt this off Glenn Lucas, have that tool nearly running vertical, so plumb. Have it nearly running plumb, but obviously on the tool rest and then over grasp grip like you're about to do some chin ups and then just rest that part of the palm of your hand on the tool rest, obviously on the safe side, on this side that I'm doing and just kiss, kiss that timber. You see those shavings coming off there? That's what we're after. So just show you one more time. So just kiss that timber, little shear straight there. So I'm ready to go now. I've got a 150 mil set of dovetail jaws here and they are fully closed. I'm going to measure to the outside of them with my dividers here. So we know we will get this nicely marked up. One side of these dividers is sharp and the other side is blunt, sharp, blunt. And I tend to keep it on the little 
revolvey side. So I've got that tool rest up, center height there. And the reason why I've gone a really wide set of jaws, so right side is shadowing the left. So that's our mark there. The reason why I've chosen a large set of jaws there is because I want the maximum amount of expansion to give the support when I'm cutting the other side. I'm gonna cut in here. Whoop. Hopefully that's not rot. It just felt super soft and crap in there then. Just gonna drag that back. Now I'm gonna cut back this way. See how that looks. Little strong finger is going to give it a <laughs> going to give it a feel. A little bit of torn brain there. That's okay. Mango's temperamental, but it's only a little bit. I'm not too stressed. Let's cut this tenon. It's got a one inch skew there, 77 degrees. Find that line and push in. Now I'm looking over that other side until I get to our spot. And that is looking not too shabby. Going to clean that bit up there. Same again, the GL5. I'm just going to come across, but I need to go in and out like a scallop. So I've literally got my gouge facing to where I normally stand on the operator's side. So I'm going to just lightly kiss that because I could catch there. There we go. Stop and come back from the other way. Oh, beautiful. Those lines there are from when, you, when we did that little pull cut, that little shear scrape. I could do it a lot better, but I'm sort of around the camera trying to get it. I know it's an excuse and that deserves a proper whip, but you can see the cleanliness of a push cut here, all through there, even, even over this, this sap, it, it's nice and clean. And through there is a little bit, how's your father? But not to worry, let's brand it. So I was just about to start sanding and I heard a little scratch on the shop and we got a very important interruption going on outside. Fun and games by the uh, Kez wood turning kids. <laughs> Rosie, Rosie, come on. Crocky, Crocky is life. Oh, good girl, Rosie. Everyone, this is Rose. Rosie. Reagan. And this is the Raggy. <laughs> Good girl, darling. Good girl. Crocky. Crocky. No. Crocky is life, everyone. Croc. Good girl. Right, let's get sanding it. So I've just sanded it up and I've gone with the 180 and the 240 grit. So we've just finished on the 240 grit there now. And I've just made some rough lines and those lines are only there to help me center up my little branding iron. I'm going to have the grain, which is getting a bit funky. It looks like a, it's a bit of a crotch section here. There it is there. So, but I'm going to have the grain running this way across the piece. So when I sign it later, I'll use those grain lines there to help me use it like a notepad. Alrighty, we've got the branding iron ready to rock and roll. I'm just going to line it up here. Make sure I've got the KC up the right way. And then I stop shaking for a second. Lightly brand. If you've got a very thin piece, just be very careful if you're going to go thin because you will go through. And there we are there. Let's oil it up. So I've got 600 grit wet and dry sandpaper. I've got a homemade blend of Danish oil that I've got going on here, uh, which I have added a little bit more gloss to it to just really penetrate down into this sort of, a, and seal it up a little bit more, this porous material. 
of mango. Mango is a little bit porous in a sense that it does, it is a little bit flaky when you, when you turn it that I've experienced. I don't know about anyone else, but it is gorgeous. Look at that little honey tones and it's just stunning material. And when you turn it, it actually smells sweet. The, the, the room fills your, your shed or your shop or your adult playroom, wherever you turn, it smells super sweet. So oh, I love it. The gloss mixture will help me get into, into all these little, little pockets. If you're after the mixture, of how to do it, I will link a video at the end of this of where to go to to find the mixture blend of how to make it. That there is gorgeous, if I say so myself. Very simple, clean, traditional cuts, nothing scraped here. That, not that I've got anything wrong with scrapers, but it's just, it's absolutely stunning. I'm just gonna put a little bit more up here. I can see a few little pockets keep going around here. And I am just gonna let this sit for a little bit and I'm gonna come back and wet sand it. Now when I wet sand, I'm just gonna lightly just drag that across. You can already see that slurry mixture. If you're having dramas getting the slurry up, just let the oil soak in for a little bit longer and then slowly work that across. You can see that real fine abrasive there forming on the front of the sandpaper. I'm just gonna keep working that across the surface and those little, that little slurry will go into some little holes and, and bits and bobs that the mango is, it's known for. And those little uh, pockets you might've seen earlier, it'll go into those. And when I buff it, cause it's got the gloss mixed into it a little bit more, it will go hard as it cures. Very moody lighting at the moment. And I will fix that up in just a sec. I just want all the attention to be on this beautiful piece of mango. So this piece of mango came from a suburb here in Brisbane called Manly. It's a beachside suburb and the tree was actually cut down. I remember where it came from and I actually remember it now why it was cut down is because it was infected with, uh, with bugs, borers. Now I'm just gonna buff this off Radio, so I wanna to apologize to everyone, uh, firstly, for my horrendous fingernails. So I pretty much had to stop the video yesterday because there was a party happening uh, on my street, but I didn't, I didn't get up too much. I just oiled it up. Now that oil has been sitting there overnight and we are ready to go and get started on the other side. But yes, my nails, as I put the footage on the computer, I was a little bit, a little bit shocked at the state of my fingernails. So apologies but about that. But uh, since then I've had to go and my job for today, we've all got those jobs that we have to, we have to do, little maintenance jobs around the, around the property. And that job for me was sanding back and recoding some posts, some steel posts, and now I've got a little bit of red oxide on my hands. So now you're gonna to have to look at that, but it's not blood. That's what I wanted to say, it's not blood. Right, so we're just gonna put this up on the lathe now. Make sure we've got a nice clean back there. But that finish, oh, I couldn't believe how nice it turned out. Just absolutely beautiful that finish on there. So just really nice. And we'll get that all cranked out up on this. That's not gonna come off. Get a bit of excitement in our day if it does. Oh. Righto, running nice and true there. Now this is where the fun will begin. We'll get it all happening, eh? I'm gonna start with that 19 mil gouge back again. And I'm just gonna work the face of that down. Should be able to bring a bit more speed to it now because it's getting more tr trued up. We'll see how it looks. A little bit more to go there. No, I'm looking, looking for big cracks. So we've got one there. 
and I haven't used any super glue yet, but we'll say that we'll bring the, I'll flat that out and then we'll mark it up. So like I said, I don't like using glues and things like that if I can avoid it, especially when I've been turning those 700 bowls. Every video that I've sort of spoken about that I've made previously in this video, I'll link them down in the description below. So you can use it as a bit of a reference guide to go and find that video that I'm talking about. In the 700 bowl video, I've tried to avoid all defects as much as possible. Just gonna mark that up now. And I normally just go natural with my thumb width there because as you can see, when you grip around the back of that platter, your hand will go around there like that naturally. So obviously I'm gonna take a lot more weight out of that because I'm gonna do all that now before I take the mass out of the center. If you take the guts out of something, the spine out of something, it makes it all floppy. I'm gonna do that now. Take a little bit more of that down and then we'll, we'll clean it right up. I think that that's, that noise we're hearing is the crack. We'll have a look at that, see how that looks. Oh, this is just turning out beautifully. We've removed it. <laughs> you don't always get those little wins, do you? Awesome, right. 16 mil. <laughs> that's a whip for sure. What happened then is I got a bit excited and the tool went around like that. See that? See why it does it itself? See that? That's what happens when you go on the on the dark side. The dark side of the force because I... I need to remove a lot of that out of there. Let's go. Gonna be a plot there, I'm gonna switch that. This is a Thompson's tool, 19 millimeter bowl gouge. Getting a bit greedy there, Kez. Just gonna check the thickness. Uh, I've got these taped on the ends so I can see how we're looking. So we've got about an inch there. We've got about 20 mil. And you might've noticed that I'm leaving the thickness in the middle to give a bit more stability to the rim because I wanna just get a bit more out and then I'll come back and, and then trim this rim down. That is looking pretty cool. I'm even thinking we do like a little undercut rim. I think that'd look pretty fancy. Back to the uh, Thompson tool. Now we have to decide what we're gonna do with this rim here. Obviously we need to take it down a bit more, but what I'm thinking is actually leaving that like that and bringing this back to meet it. So it's a little bit more straight down in this point, but I don't know if that'll look good or not. Decisions, the shisms, this is what I like about it. I'm, I'll take this, I'll take that bead down or this, this shoulder in here, I'll take this down and then we'll go from there. It's gonna take it down like this. See how that looks. We can roll that and then come down a little bit deeper. Mark that there. So then we can roll that little like double bead sort of looking thing. So I'm just gonna get this little uh, spindle gouge a quick little touch up on this uh, Robert Sorby Pro Edge sharpening system here. I'm just gonna roll the front. like so, and then roll, and then come up the side, back down, and then back up. Righto. So I've got my two hands around you at the moment, giving you a big hug. <laughs> so what we're gonna do, I'm gonna come in there, roll it up, and then come down and do the same the other side there. And then see that little bit there? Like that. And then I'm gonna go around the other side. On this side here, I'm just gonna do the same. So I'm gonna come in. Yep, 
It works better going back towards myself, so I'm just going to do that quickly, so... See how that looks? And that looks, that looks quite pretty. And see the way that's like a little half sort of little bead? It's not a full rolled bead. And then we'll, we'll work this out now. But I wouldn't mind just taking this little section down just a touch more. That looks gorgeous there. Just check our check our thickness there. Nice. We still got plenty of meat there. And then we have to remember the recess. You know what? I'm gonna give Daddy Do a run, right? Oh. This is my father-in-law's gouge. This handle is made out of black wattle. It's extremely it's it's heavy, but I never, I never use his gouge, but I want to for this video. So let's do that. Let's give you a run, Dad. Thanks, Dad. So for everyone that watches my videos and gets up to these points in the video that are later on in the video. Now you know why I never use that gouge just there with that black wattle handle. Now you know whose it is. Cause I do get people asking me who's that gouge belongs to or why don't I use that gouge? So now you know. Back to the Thompson. Uh, this is my one. I saw dad with one, my father-in-law. So I had to get one myself, you know. Of course I did. So now I'm gonna work my way into the center and just trim it up so it's super neat. We're gonna come right out to get that bevel on point. Check that finish out. That's nice. Now we'll keep working our way across. And to do that, I'm just gonna switch between the six, this 19 mil. And the little 45. Just working it down little bit by little bit. Let's check our thickness. Make sure <laughs> we're not gonna go down the bottom there. Eh? Nah, we've got about 10 mil there and it's getting nice and flat towards the base there. And nice and light and delicate, which is what I'm after. Sand her up. Alrighty, that bead turned out really nice. And I'll just let you know when I am sanding, so when I'm using my, my, my drills here, I have them labelled, so I just leave the 180 grit on that. But when I'm finished, if it's cooked, like if the sandpaper's ruined and I can't reuse it, I just fold it over and then place that sandpaper in there to get that real nice bead. I don't, I don't roll, roll over the top of it. I just lightly touch it and then make sure I keep that detail in there. So that's how I go about doing that. But I'm just going to lather this up now with that uh, Danish oil blend with a little bit more poly in it, like I mentioned earlier. So no change there with that. And that will soak deep into those little pores and where the worms have been in around, in around this piece just here. And yeah, I really need to get into that bead there, that sort of half bead, get around that main bead all around the, to the toe of it, to the shoulder and the toe and deep into the crease of that bead, making sure we got plenty, but not too much, because if you put too much oil on, when you're finished putting it on, it can sort of uh, pit up. So it looks like it looks like the wood's sweating. That's when you know you've, you've put a bit too much on there, but 
what I do is just sort of put it on and then just scoot around like this just to get up any excess that I've got and just let that sit there for just a second and then we'll wet sand it. So I'll let that sit for about, I don't know, 10 minutes, 15 minutes or so and then come back straight to you. And I want to do a little measure up at the end here because obviously it's not going to be the same thickness all the way down to the base because I think the base was about four or three mil after that final little trim, little one last cut. We all know how they tend to go, but I think we pulled it off because I don't want it to be too thin but I think, I think we pulled it off. I just want to do a little check at the end. I'm not used to wearing gloves, but I'm going to try and start wearing them, being a little bit more proactive in wearing them because there is, you know, chemicals in that mix alive, so to speak. I'm not a, I'm not a chemist, but it goes without saying, you don't want to put thinners and things over your hands all the time and have that long exposure. So that's what I'm going to try and avoid in the future and just wear, wear these gloves. But they have to be a particular set of gloves that you probably see people when they do epoxy pores and stuff, they're a particular set of gloves that they use that they, they don't allow chemicals and crap to get past like the barrier. I can really feel that Gloss. There's a lot of gloss in that. Just going to get that excess up before we try and buff that in. But the thinners help penetrate deep into this sort of porous sort of timber and get into those little bug holes, like I said before. But I'm really liking this because, I, like I said, I didn't want to use super glues and all that artificial crap. I don't like using it as much as I can. I know there's a purpose for it, but I try not to use it. I try not use it as much as I can. Now, if you're after another elegant finish, apart from Danish oil, cause I jabber on about Danish oil all the time, check this video out just here. It's about Aussie oil, friction polish, and I hope you enjoy that video as well. Thank you so much for watching. I'll talk to you all directly. Cheers. Bye. You beauty.